everyone, welcome to example four. In this example, we're going to use our linear model to make predictions. So we have our linear model, we've established that in examples one, two, and three, or we did our scatter plot and then got our linear model and then our correlation coefficient. But now with all of that, we would like to predict the percentage of persons 25 years or older who will be college graduates in 2005 and 2023. So you can see that 2005, I don't have the data for that. And it's, it's true, like if you go to the Census Bureau data, they don't have, they didn't take this number in 2005. They do it every other, e or excuse me, every other year, but every even year. So we can predict what we think it was in 2005. That's what linear modeling does. It allows you to predict. And then obviously the Census Bureau doesn't have the number yet for 2023, because we're just in the year, when I'm recording this video, it's the year 2019. So there's there's no way for them to have that, that value. So we're also gonna predict a little bit into the future. So we're gonna predict for a value inside our given data, right, inside the years 1998 and 2016, and we're also gonna use our model to predict outside those, those data values. All right, so let me show you how you can do this. You can do this in a couple of ways, but I wanna show you how you can do it on the calculator, okay? So if you've run regression, and I'm doing it this time off of the data with, with your original years in it, no base year. All right, this is just, I'm going L1 and L2, all right? So that's the calculator command I would have used, L1, L2, Y1. All right, and when I hit zoom nine, I see my graph. Okay, so your calculator can predict X values for you, or it can give you Y values, excuse me. I think I just said that wrong. It can predict Y values for you. Um, as long as you give it an X value. So here's how we do this. We're gonna hit second and our trace key. It's gonna call up our calculation menu screen. And we've used a few of these before, right? We've talked about values, zeros, maxes, mins. We haven't done intersection yet, but we're gonna go with value. So let's hit enter, okay? All right, now, which X value would I like to, to predict for? Well, the first one they gave me was 2005. So I hit enter. And it tells me, hey, we think the percent of graduates that year was about 27.86. So almost halfway between these, these two values, all right? So 27.86% of people who were 25 years or older were college graduates in the year 2005. And again, that's just my best guess. The Census Bureau didn't take data that year. Okay, I think it's somewhere around 27.86%. Now comes the bigger one. We're gonna actually try and predict nine years into the future. And I say nine years, because yes, it's 2019 when I'm recording this, so it's really only four years into the future, but the last even year that I had data for was 2016. So I wanna predict nine years past my last data point. Okay, so we're gonna do the same calculator commands and something's gonna go wrong. And we'll talk about what goes wrong. So let's hit second and trace, hit option one. And let's type in 2016. I'm gonna hit enter. Oops, not 2016. Let's pretend I do the problem that you were asked to do. So let's hit second and trace. Let's hit value. Let's type in 2023. Sorry, I was looking at 2016 on my calculator or my computer screen. Um, so we're gonna type in 2023. I'm gonna hit enter and I get an invalid. Something went wrong. And here's what always goes wrong when you try and predict into the future. So let me just hit go to, all right? I'm gonna hit option two, I wanna to go to my error. Your calculator is freaking out over the number 2023. And if I hit window, we'll start to see why. You'll see my x-axis is based from 1996 to about 2018. So 2032, oh, not 2032, 2023 is outside of that window, right? It's too far outside of that window. So I need to adjust my x max. And you can pick any number you want here. You can do 2030, you can do 2080, it doesn't matter. Just pick a number that includes 2023. You could even do 2024. I like to usually just do nice rounded numbers, so I'm gonna do 2023. Now, whenever you adjust your window, do not hit zoom nine, hit graph. If you hit zoom nine, it's gonna reset you to that 2017, 2018 number. So I'm gonna hit graph. And you can see I have a lot more room on the right side of my screen because I've extended this from about 2018 to 2030. So now I'm gonna hit second and trace again. Option one, let's type in 2023, hit enter. 
And now it's giving me a number, right? It's not popping back an error. It's saying, hey, I think about 36% or 36.3% of people who are 25 years or older are going to have college degrees by the time we get to 2023. So over a third of people, right, out there, over a third of adults are gonna have, or at least that's what we're predicting, to have college degrees by the time they're 25 years old. All right, so with that, I'm gonna rework all of this using the base year data, but I'm gonna do that by hand so you can see me write all of that out. All right, I'll see you in a few games, bye. Hey, Math 31, I, I wanna go back over how to predict with your calculator and by hand once we have that linear model. And I want to do it both ways. I want to do it with just your original data and I want to do it with the base year data so that you can see both of these play out. Now we, we just did the original data via our calculator. So let me do original data by hand. So if we remember our original model, it was f of x was equal to negative 9, 12, 0.665 plus 0.469 times x. Now I was asked to predict for two years, right? The, the year 2005 and then the year 2023. Now if you're not using a base year, which I wasn't in this case, because remember we had the really, really large y-intercept, then you would plug in the numbers as is. So I would do f of 2005 equaling negative 912.665 oops plus 0.469 times 2005 and then instead of figuring out this number on my graph screen let's go ahead and figure it out on my calculation screen so negative 912 oops 0.665 plus 0.469 times 2005 gives me about 27.68. So let me write that down. That would be 27.68%, right? Because that were our, those were our units. Now, if you remember, if I rerun regression, and I just want to make sure I have everything on the, the original data. So stat calc 8, L1, L2, Y1. All right, if I hit zoom 9, here comes my line. Let's see how close this, this number was to the calculation screen value when I do, oops, excuse me, second calc one, 2005. So it was off by a little bit, right? This says 27.86, I got 27.68. This is technically more accurate because it has all of those decimals saved where I actually rounded at the third decimal point. All right, so 27.86 against, oops, what did we have here when we did it? 27.68, so pretty close, and both the answers are acceptable. All right, now for 2023, again, off of my original data, oops, that should be 469. All right, let's see what this number would give me. Let's see, 2023, we would get about 36.12. And again, the units on this are percentages. All right, so we've got that number established. Great. All right, so let's see what we would have gotten on our calculator. Again, I'll hit zoom nine. There it goes. So let's do second calc one. Oops, second calc one. So I'm gonna do 2023. This is when the domain error pops back out because I haven't gone further far enough in my window. So I'm gonna adjust my window, I'll go 2030. I just need to pick a number here that's larger than 2023 because that's what I'm being asked to predict for. As soon as you adjust your window, don't hit zoom nine again. If you hit zoom nine, this is just gonna set back to that 2017 number, hit graph. Once I hit graph, you'll see that I have a lot more room over here on the right. And now I can do this, second calc one, two, oh, two, three, hit enter. I get 36.31, all right, so 36.31, that's not too far off from what we have here at 36.12%. And again, this is actually um, more accurate or more precise because it's got all of the decimals floating there. Okay, so that's all fine and good. This was, I should have put here, this is for my original data. 
Okay. Now let's do it for the base year data. All right, when we were doing base year, we had that our function, it had the same slope, but a much smaller y-intercept. We were actually at 20.825 plus 0.469 times x. And if you remember how I got it, all right, I actually have my data in L3 and L4. So let me go adjust everything. Let me take my stat plot. Now let's do L3 against L4. Let's do stat calc 8, L3, L4, Y1, right? Because I want to do it for my base year data. And for me personally, it's in L3 and L4. If you just wiped out L1 and L2, if you wiped out, excuse me, your original data and put the base year into L1 and L2, great, use that. I'm going to hit enter and there we go. So now if I hit zoom nine, everything will work out. I've got my line from my base year data and I've got my scatter plot on my base year data. Now I keep noticing when I hit zoom nine, you see the calculator, it looks like it's working long after the line ends because I just see that, that kind of like the equivalent of the apple wheel. Let me go to my y equals. Ah, there, my calculator is graphing a second line. It kept, I knew it was thinking past this original line. So let me clear that out, make sure there's nothing else in here. Now when I hit zoom nine, it's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. As soon as the line stopped, I saw it stop thinking. So I knew there wasn't anything else in there. All right, so with this, let's start to predict. Now, I don't want you to plug in, let me write your base year here was 1990. You cannot plug in 2005 here. That is way too large of a number. All right, you have to remember your base year is 1990. So the number you want to plug in is 2005 minus 1990 because 2005 was 15 years after 1990. So that's one of the big differences with using a base year. Don't plug in 2005 here because 2005 represents 2005 years after 1990, not the year. 2005. So I need to plug in 15. So I'm going to do f of 15 is equal to 20.825 plus 0.469 times 15. All right, so when I do that, we'll do 20.825 plus 0.469 times 15, and we are getting 27.86%. Okay, so I've got that happening, great. If I wanted to check this on my calculator, let's hit zoom nine. And now I'm gonna plug in 15. So I'll do second calc one, let's type in 15. And this is actually pretty accurate, right? 27.86, 27.86, it's looking good. All right, let's keep on moving. Let's try 2023. Now again, I am not going to type in 2023, that does not represent the year 2023. It represents 2023 years after 19, <coughs> oh, excuse me, excuse me, 20, 2023 years after your base year of 1990. Whenever you wanna figure out what year to plug in. All right, here we go. Take your current year and subtract out your base year. It's always the difference between those two. So it looks like I'm actually gonna plug in 33. go. So I'm plugging in 33. So this would be 20.825 plus 0.469 times 33. All right, let's see what that would give us just off of our calculation screen. It looks like it gives us 36.302. And again, the units would be percent. Okay, let's see what would happen if we tried this on our, our graph screen, so second calc option one, I'm gonna plug in 33. That domain error is gonna pop out, that dimension error, so I will go to it. Let me adjust my window. I'll make this 35. All right, I'm gonna hit graph, not zoom nine, because whenever you adjust your window, don't hit zoom nine, it'll just reset this back to the default. You wanna hit graph. I got a lot more area on the right side of my graph. And let's plug in 33. So second trace one, 33. 
and we've got 36.305. That's pretty darn close to 36.302. All right, so we've got our calculator helping us out. So there's a bunch of ways you can get the answer, right? Here's the original data, right? The, the downside here is you've got a pretty large y-intercept and you're plugging in pretty large numbers, but you can still get the correct answers, right? And you can get them off of your calculation screen or a second calc one and using that value calculation. Or you can use your base here, which I tend to do. I, I don't like large numbers, so I, I chop the y-intercept down. But then the, the, the little catch is you have to remember to convert your years to years after your base year. Where this is more direct, plugging in 2005, and 2023, here I had to remember to adjust to 15 and 33. Okay, before we get out of this section, I need to talk to you about a concept of interpolation versus extrapolation. So if we're taking a look at the, these two new vocab terms, different methods of making predictions are used to analyze data. The method of interpolation involves predicting a value inside the domain and or range of the data. The method of extrapolation involves predicting a value outside the domain and or the range of the data. And model breakdown occurs to the point when the model no longer applies. And I'll, I'll talk about model breakdown. We will talk about this concept in example five. But this is asking, were our predictions, these two predictions I made up top here in example four, were they interpolation or extrapolation? So let's see if we can scooch back up and then we'll talk about whether I was looking at interpolation or extrapolation in this example. All right, so for here, for the year 2005, 2005 was inside my domain, right? You can see it was right smack dab in the middle of there. So this is an example of interpolation. Okay. Now on the flip of that, 2023, it was actually nine years outside of my given domain, right? It was outside of the domain. So this is an example of extrapolation. All right, so when your value that you're plugging in is inside your given domain or range, you're gonna have interpolation. When it's outside, it's extrapolation. And it's much harder to extrapolate than interpolate. All right, the, more you, the better you get at predicting into the future, the more likely you can make some money off of it, right? I would love to know when the stock market was gonna be at a high or a low. I would love to be able to predict that. I would love to be able to predict when the next housing bubble bursts, all right? But extrapolating, predicting into the future is very difficult. Interpolating, predicting off of past data, that's not as, as difficult to do. All right, so with that, we finished example four. We're now gonna move on to a brand new example. All right, and it'll be our last example for, for the section. And then we're gonna wrap up at least linear regression, linear modeling. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.